This video is going to go over the regioselectivity of the E2 mechanism. Regioselectivity is referring to the location of, in this particular case, the location of the carbon-carbon double bond in the product or products, if more than one is made, of the E2 reaction. So when we're studying the regioselectivity of E2, what we're studying is where does the carbon-carbon double bond end up in the molecule? So for our first example, we have two identical alkyl halides, uh, and they are going to undergo the E2 reaction with two different bases. This base right here is called tert butoxide, tert butoxide, and this base down here is called methoxide. These are both very common bases that are used in the E2 reaction. Methoxide is a lot of times abbreviated OME, where ME is the abbreviation for the methyl group. Terbutoxide can sometimes be abbreviated TOBU, like that. And what I want you um, with the terbutoxide, I'm going to almost immediately erase this, but the structure of the terbutoxide is a carbon with three methyl groups on it. So it's gonna look something like this. And I want you to kind of keep that in mind about uh, having those three methyl groups on the carbon atom. It's gonna come up as we, as we talk about this reaction. So let's start by drawing the potential products of this particular reaction. When we're doing the elimination reaction, we are removing the leaving group from the molecule, and we're also pulling a hydrogen off of an adjacent carbon. So what I've done is highlighted the carbon with the leaving group, I've highlighted the carbons that are adjacent to that carbon with the leaving group, and I'm gonna draw the hydrogens in on the adjacent carbon so that we can see which hydrogens are available for this particular reaction. The E2 reaction, as a reminder, is our one-step reaction. So this is where everything is happening all at once. We're going to have our base, terbutoxide in this example, come in and grab any one of those four hydrogens that I drew. I'm just choosing one that's close. And the carbon-hydrogen bonding electrons are going to move down to form the carbon-carbon double bond while the leaving group is being removed. So all of those things are happening all at the same time, and the product of this reaction will look like this. And I've gone ahead and um, all of the hydrogens that I originally drew that I didn't remove, I kept those in the product as well just to kind of... Make sure you understand which ones are leaving and which ones are not. So here is one possible product for this reaction. And if the terbutoxide grabbed this hydrogen or if it grabbed this hydrogen, we would end up with the same product um, no matter what because all three of these hydrogens are identical. So our other option for this reaction, we're going to do in a different color. The other possibility is that the terbutoxide grabs the hydrogen on the other carbon. Now those carbon hydrogen electrons would come in and make a carbon carbon double bond and the bromine would be removed as well. And this particular product would be different in terms of the location of the carbon carbon double bond. So this is what we're talking about, regioselectivity. Is the double bond located here or is the double bond located here in this reaction? Now, before we talk about these two different prod products, let's go down to the next reaction as well. And we have the exact same alkyl halide, we just have a different base. Now that doesn't change the potential products for the reaction. We're still gonna be removing this leaving group. We're still gonna be abstracting a hydrogen from one of these adjacent carbon atoms. So any one of these hydrogens as well, it doesn't matter what the base is. So the two possible products for this reaction are the same as the two possible products for the reaction when we're using tert-butoxide. Now, you might be wondering what is the point of showing this with two different bases if they're going to make the same products, because they are. 
When we use different bases in the E2 reaction, such as terputoxide versus methoxide, we find that even though the reaction produces the same product, the molecules have a preference for one product over the other, meaning that in this reaction right here, one of these two products is formed preferentially or in a greater amount. And we call that particular product the major product because it's the thing that is made the most. We can predict which of these two products is the major product by understanding the structure of the terbutoxide. So remember when I drew the structure of the terbutoxide ion and it's that carbon that has methyl groups hanging off of it. So this terbutoxide is actually really bulky. It's really cumbersome. We actually call it the bulky base because it's just so uh, large. And because the terbutoxide is bulky, when it is coming at our alkyl halide and attacking a hydrogen atom, even though it's capable of attacking either hydrogen atom, just as we've shown here, it has a much easier time grabbing a hydrogen atom from the end of a carbon chain where there isn't much steric hindrance. And it has quite a bit of a harder time grabbing a hydrogen from inside the carbon chain where you have a lot of other stuff going on as well, sort of interfering with the access to that hydrogen. Because it is easier for the bulky base to grab a hydrogen out here at the end of the carbon chain, in this particular reaction, the product that is formed as a result of the bulky base going after one of these end hydrogens is what we call our major product, the product that we make the most of. The other product is still formed but it is formed in a lesser quantity. So we call that the minor product. And in terms of, you know, what does it mean numerically to be major versus minor? It's, it varies if with each reaction, there's different percentages. So maybe in this, the major product, maybe it's 70% and the minor is 30, or maybe it's 80%, or maybe it's 55%. Just, you know, anything greater than the amount that we make for the minor product. We don't concern ourselves with the actual percentage of the major product. So we understand when we're using the bulky base, the rule is that the major product is always the alkene that is formed by removing a hydrogen from the end of a carbon chain. Another way that we can say that that sounds more scientific the major product is the alkene that has the fewest number of R groups attached. So when we're looking at the R groups on these two different alkene products, our major product has only one R group where our minor product has three R groups. We'll come back and add that note. Now with the methoxide, because this is a much smaller base, the methoxide is not bulky. It's not sterically hindered. So it has no problem, of course, grabbing a hydrogen from the end of the chain. It also has no problem coming in here and grabbing one of these internal hydrogens. Small bases like methoxide can access any hydrogen um, equally easy. And so it doesn't have any sort of steric hindrance that is interfering with its ability to access a hydrogen. So in terms of access, the methoxide's ability to access hydrogen, both of these products are, are equal in terms of accessibility. When that is the case, when we're dealing with a small base that can access any hydrogen anywhere, what we see is that the best alkene, meaning the most stable alkene, is our major product, and the least stable alkene is our minor product. Now, maybe you've forgotten about stability of the alkene. The stability of the alkene completely comes from how many R groups are attached to that carbon chain. So when we um, are just talking about thermodynamic stability, we're looking for the alkene that has the most R groups. So let's see if we can find a way to sort of summarize this if we are using terbutoxide 
as our base. And tert-butoxide is the only base that, that actually does this. This is our bulky base, and it is our only base that does this. The major product of the E2 reaction is what we call the least substituted alkene. The least sub substituted alkene is the alkene that has the most R groups and the, nope, said that backwards, has the least R groups, the least carbon, carbon bonds, and the most hydrogens on the alkene. When we are using any other base, anything other than tert-butoxide, the major product of the E2 reaction is our most substituted alkene. And this is going to be the alkene that has the most R groups and the least hydrogens. Now, when we're counting R groups and we're counting hydrogens, we're only talking about counting the hydrogens and R groups that are on the carbon-carbon double bond. One R group and one, two, three hydrogens. Or one, two, three R groups and one hydrogen.